Okay. Hello. Hi, YouTube. Um, this time, um, this video, I'm talking about marriage amendments, period, died in a story, um, and mainly one that's coming up in Minnesota and efforts to repeal marriage equality in Washington and Maryland. And I wrote this down simply because I know that I can sometimes, well, not sometimes, a lot of the time, um, go off on a tangent. So I decided to write it down. So here we go. Um, while following the marriage amendments passed to the people in North Carolina and Minnesota, as well as the referendum efforts in Washington and Maryland, it was my hope that one of them would fail to qualify for the ballot. Simply, I hate the fact that most of the proponents know that they'll pass, which is more likely for them once they reach the ballot. Um, after the, the, the defeat of Proposition 5, which was a law that would ban discrimination of LGBT individuals in housing, employment and other other fields in which LGBT -ish, um, individuals deal with on a consistent basis, um, the mayor vetoed it and said that it should go to the people. And then once it got to the people, NAM, Anchorage, Baptist Church, and quite a few other right uh, aligned individuals uh, decided that they were going to push for a campaign to get this rejected. It was rejected. And of course, on the anti-equality side, they have to play dirty. That's just how it is. Um, and then I heard about Walker retaining his seat despite the recall effort against him. I thought it was sure to win. However, the Democrats, they screwed up. Let's just be blunt about it. Um, and despite all that, I wanted to hear some, some, some good news for once. Now, going back to May 8th, I was, I was headed to Albany to speak with our legislators about gender, which would basically um, prohibit the discrimination against transgender persons in credit, education, housing, and medical facilities. Um, LGBT people don't have to look far to see what can happen when someone expresses their, quote, sincere religious beliefs um, against them in one, one of those settings. Um, one example in what was in New Jersey when a gay man was denied his HIV meds because um, she wanted to know how he got it. And he said, oh, you're uh, she said, oh, you're a gay man. Well, I don't agree with this. It's against God. And you're going to you're not going to have your meds. Now, first, I feel this is a blatant invasion of privacy. Um, so why do I mention this when I'm talking about the three states dealing with the marriage amendments in November? It's because of the simple fact that the dignity and equality of LGBT people are on the line here. Last year, um, last year Maryland rejected a trans-inclusive bill that would be basically like gender. Um, but and the, the the next week, I believe, Christy Polis was was assaulted in in a Baltimore area McDonald's, Rosedale to be exact. Now, the world was very much stunned at the savage beating of this trans woman, and I had noticed that even among progressives or people who are Democrat, uh, leftist, liberally aligned, racism can still be there. Shocking fact, but hell, it's the truth. So May 8th came and went, and the Amer marriage amendment was adopted. I was sure, I'm sure that in North Carolina, there were slews of marriages that were like, oh, we're saved. The, the marriage amendment was passed and we're no longer going to be divorced. We're going to be good parents now. And and the husband's going to stop beating his wife. And, you know, the wife is going to stop cheating on her husband. And, you know, um, the, the kids are going to be really good kids now because the marriage amendment passed. And, and it was saving marriages all over North Carolina. So uh, I'm pretty sure that that was, you know, that was the case. Um, I'm pretty sure May 9th, some of the divorces went through. But um, we'll see, I'm pretty sure we'll see this if uh, Minnesota adopts one, if North Carolina, um, like, uh, what is it, Minnesota, Washington, and Maryland, if they readopt a ban so that gay couples can't get, get married in those states. I'm sure we'll see many you know, marriages saved instantly the day after President Barack Obama is reelected. But Minnesota, like North Carolina, has a statute that is... Um, already bans uh, marriages between uh, gay and lesbian couples. But um, in Minnesota, it's it's being challenged. Um, it was re it was re revived um, after in, in 2010, there was a di dismissal. But this year it was revived because they said that um, it relied on Baker versus Nelson in 1972. And so many um, the world of law has changed since then. So now the amendment failing in Minnesota or North Carolina would not have have 
have um, allowed gay and lesbian couples to marry, it would simply have kept the statute in place. But if the statute were overturned by activist judges, aka judges that believe that equal protection applies to gay and lesbian people, you know, yeah, um, then it would just, it, it would have another obstacle to face, which I'm pretty sure both can fall at the same time, regardless of its, if, if it's a constitutional amendment and statute. Either way, both can be challenged legally. Um, I'm opposed to all efforts, all efforts to withhold get, um, equal protection under the law to LGBT community because it offends the very notion of our Constitution and what it stands on. The Constitution was written so that the, 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 the majority would not be able to tyrannically rule, even though that does happen, but it was, it's again, a check and balance. Um, so, equal protection under the law does not mean that all citizens, um, do, does not mean that all things must be equal, aka a gay couple having to be procreative, so to speak, um, in order to have the legal protections of marriage. And also, no moral obligation Ob objections, excuse me, to illegal marriage has ever voided a marriage, and that's true in all 50 states. You know, Mildred Loving, M Richard and Mildred Loving, just because the state of Virginia objected to their marriage did not make it illegal, although they technically did it, but they, you know, that was an unfair law. So marriage protection amendments are only a way to tell our LGBT citizens that they don't deserve the same protections that we all enjoy because of the fact that they lay next to a person of the same gender. There is no gay lifestyle, there's just life. There is no straight lifestyle either, just life. These referendums are simply an indictment on how the public feels about gay couples being able to marry, even though they may not have, quote, anything against them. They want to keep us an appropriate distance away from getting what they have, or it'll feel weird because they don't want to, um, it'll feel weird because now, oh my goodness, you know, you have what we have. Oh my goodness, that's an infringement on my rights. You know, but they don't want us to have kids because they are the ones that are confused. They don't want us to be married because they don't understand why I would, would want to marry a man. They don't want us to be equal because they don't think we're equal. It's unimportant. Bigots will ban us from proms with our dates, stop GSAs by canceling all extracurricular activities, all because of the simple fact that we won't go away and stop being gay and all in your face about it. But this says more about them than it does about us. When I kiss my boyfriend in public, I don't want to be co confronted by some idiotard who says something like, you can't be doing that in public, and sometimes that can be a police officer. So I bring this all up because it's a part of a plan to keep us in our place. And out of public eye, as Tony Perkins likes to say, it's about public policy. This isn't about what we do in our bedrooms, although the very notion of, although it makes them throw up in their cornflakes, just me crawling into bed next to my, my boyfriend. But this is about the fact that we won't hide, we're out in the open, and we won't go back into a closet and forget our existence as they would love us to do. In fact, check out this uh, X gay equals X wife. You should really check that out because that's another thing that these reparative bozos don't really like to think about or look at. So, you can have as many votes as you want to to deny the constitutional protections that we are that the Constitution says we already have, but we're not going anywhere and we're going to fight for them. You can put us all behind electric fences, we, we're not going to go away. You can't kill us off without killing all straight people because we come from straight parents. Religious families, atheist families, liberal, conservative, whatever. We're born all over this globe. You can threaten us with reparative therapy all you want, but there's nothing to repair. Nothing. It is you who signed the petitions to put our rights on the ballot because you think we threaten your family when we're allowed to marry. It is you who are in desperate need of repair when you say, don't let them get married because our kids will be confused. Again, you pawn that off on your children to say, hey, they're confused. That's it. Adopt a marriage ban, um, put up barriers to gay couples adopting, throw in all you want. It doesn't matter because we're still going to raise kids and do what we can for our rights, whether it's Montana, Minnesota, North Carolina, Maine, Virginia, um, Vermont, Nevada, Utah, Maine. Wherever you oppose us, we will continue to fight and build up our victories. New York is and remains a turning point. Every single defeat we have is a setup for a comeback. A setback is a setup for
for a comeback. We will fight for marriage. We will fight for funding for LGBT youth centers like the Alley Fort Forney Center. We need more funding there. We need throwaway laws so that when LGBT kids are thrown out of their homes, they don't lose everything. Um, we will fight for public health and voting rights. We will fight to make sure transgender people are covered under the law and will be the productive citizens that they can be despite the fear that you mistakenly justify. Marriage referendums are much larger than marriage, which is why I bring these things up because it is a part of a greater struggle, not for acceptance, because I'll live whether a bigot wants me to or not. The fact is, I have the right to live an ordinary civic life without government interference, unfair government interference, which is the definition of a civil right. So I, as a black man, I say this, and I will, I will accept a debate with anybody who says that civil rights are only for blacks. Because Hernandez versus Texas in 1954 said that Mexicans are also covered under the 14th Amendment. So, black people don't have a patent on civil rights. We're not hijacking the civil rights movement. The civil rights movement is hijacking the labor movement. The civil rights movement is hijacking so many other movements, if you really want to take it there. So, civil right doesn't only apply there. It applies to gay and lesbian couples, too. It applies to gay and lesbian students, gay and lesbian kids. The right wing would not like to believe that they're gay and lesbian kids. But that's one of the aims of this channel is to help people who may live in areas where, or even families where they're not, quote, accepted or I can't accept it. So that's all for that's all for the marriage amendment. Uh, have a great day. This is Vidhead eight five.